So in a previous video, we introduced this difference amplifier, and we said that for the ideal case of it rejecting the common mode signal, so that is if anything that's common between our inputs V1 and V2, we said that we had this case of R4 over R3 is equal to R2 over R1. And I think I might be writing that a little different than it was shown last time. Um, but of course, it's just the same equation rearranged a little bit. So we actually came into our circuit and we replaced our R3 resistor with R1 and we replaced our R4 resistor with R2. And so we said in that case, we have zero output voltage when V1 equals V2. But we said that's the ideal case. So we're not necessarily always gonna have that ideal case. So let's take a look at how we can quantify how far off ideal the amplifier is. And so we're gonna do that with something called the common mode rejection ratio or CMRR. So what we're gonna say is, well, what if these resistor ratios are not equal? So first off, what that would mean is that our output voltage is not going to be equal to zero when our two inputs are equal to one another. So when V1 equals V2, we will have some non-zero output. And we're gonna have some common mode gain as a consequence. So there is some common mode gain. And so of course, earlier if our output is zero for this common mode, uh, we, of course, had a zero as our common mode gain, but now we have some non-zero common mode gain, which we're going to call A sub CM for common mode. And we're going to say that's equal to V out divided by what we're introducing as V common mode, V CM. And I'll define that here in a second. Um, well, actually, right now, so our common mode voltage is going to be defined. So where our common mode voltage... It's essentially just going to be the average of our two input voltages. So V common mode is equal to V1 plus V2 over two. Okay, and let's call this equation one to be consistent with our notes. So we can also define a differential input mode voltage so we haven't defined it up to this point, but it's going to be useful for our definition of our common mode rejection ratio. So our differential mode input voltage is just going to be the difference of our two input voltages. And we're gonna call that V sub D for differential equals V2 minus V1. And so let's call this equation two. Okay, so if we combine equation one and two, we can get expressions for V1 and V2 in terms of our common mode and differential mode. So combining, and let me just switch over here to blue, combining one and two. Let me also try to spell combining correctly. That would be good. Okay, combining one and two, um, what we get is V1 is equal to our V common mode minus VD over two, and V2 is equal to V common mode plus VD over two. Um, and so let's call these equations three and four, just for reference. Okay. And so personally, I like to think about this a little more graphically. It makes more sense to me graphically. So let's say we have our V2 level somewhere up here. And so we're talking about um, just sort of a constant voltage, but the same ideas apply if we have time varying signals as well. So then let's maybe say our V1 level is somewhere down here. So by definition, our V common mode in equation one there, we said is the average. So it's going to be some point right in between here is going to be our V common mode. And then by definition in equation two, our difference voltage is just the voltage between one and two. So this difference between our V2 and V1 is our difference voltage. So 
personally, I think looking at this graphical representation, it's easier to go from here to get these two equations, three and four. Um, but of course you can do it purely with algebra and combining equations one and two. Okay, so regardless of how you get to these equations, we now have all of these expressions. And then one other thing that we want to define is we wanna say our output voltage in general is going to be some expression um, related to our um, common mode gain as well as our differential mode gain. So in general, that's going to be given by output voltage is equal to our differential gain times our differential voltage plus our common mode gain times our common mode voltage. So let's label this as equation five. So now our sort of merit of how well or how ideal our difference amplifier is, our common mode rejection ratio is then just defined as CMRR is equal to the magnitude of AD over ACM. So what is the value of the differential mode gain divided by our common mode gain? And so our common mode gain, of course, we had defined up here as V out over V common mode, where we defined our V common mode right below. And then our, our differential gain, we had defined in a previous video as R2 divided by R1. So typically our differential gain is gonna be pretty large and our common mode gain is going to be pretty small. So because of that, oftentimes this common mode rejection ratio will be expressed in decibels. So that's useful when we have really large numbers. So typically it's just expressed in decibels, which is just 20 log base 10. So I'll write the base 10 explicitly here of that AD over ACM. And so typically we're gonna want a common mode rejection ratio on the order of 100 for a good difference amplifier. Um, so, and so again, just keep in mind, this is a merit of how ideal this difference amplifier is. So we'll see in some future videos, some examples of how to put all of this together.